In this tutorial, I want to show you the fastest and easiest way to use frequency separation for portrait retouching with just a few simple clicks. If you're new to this method and want to know how it's done, I do have a video linked in the description that shows how to set it up. For this demonstration, I will be using a frequency separation action that I've made that will be available for free download in the description below. One of the plugins required to execute the speed retouching is Portraiture, so make sure you have that installed and are ready to go. I'm running an older version, but any version will work perfectly for this method. The first thing you're going to do is run the frequency separation action. You're going to do this by going to the actions panel, clicking frequency separation, and pressing play. Once the action is complete, you're going to click on your low layer and press command J to duplicate the layer. You're going to rename your low copy to portraiture. Once you have that layer renamed, you're going to go to filter, and down to portraiture. Now that you have portraiture open, the first thing you're going to do is look here to the left panel and make sure that every slider is to the far right. You're going to go under skid tones and make sure that, that is off. This means that the effect will be applied to the full image at its max capacity. If you don't want the effect on certain areas of the image, you can later use a mask to remove those. I'm going to zoom in and just click on this to show you a before and after of what portraiture is doing. And now I'm going to click OK. I'm going to zoom in and toggle portraiture on and off so you can see the effect. It did a really good job considering that this was only one click. Now, what it didn't do is fix some of these areas up here on the forehead that are a little oversaturated. So, what I'm going to do to fix those issues is create a blank layer. I'm going to rename it Skin Tone. I'm going to select a brush. I'm going to lower my flow and my opacity. I'm going to click Option, which turns my icon into an eyedropper tool, and this way I can sample anywhere on her skin. So I'm going to sample here in the forehead, and then I'm going to lightly paint on this trouble area. I'm going to keep reselecting and resampling, and just lightly painting. It's very easy to go overboard with this method. Now I'm going to go down here by the lip area. You just want to make sure you're being very subtle, creating nice transitions. I'm going to toggle this on and off to see the before and after. And I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to adjust this area here a little bit more. And blend this out. So now that I've completed that, the next step I'm going to do to unify the skin tone is create a new layer. I'm going to call it All Over Skin. Similar methods, last time I'm going to use a brush. Press Option to sample. A color on her face. I'm going to go with a neutral color. Somewhere around here, I'm going to press Shift Delete to fill the whole layer. It's going to look a little crazy, but we're going to change the blending mode to saturation. And of course, we don't want this anywhere else in the image but the skin, so we're going to make sure that this layer is a mask. And I'm going to press Command I to invert the effect. And then I'm going to take a big, large, white brush, put my opacity and my flow at max, and just paint back the areas where I want it to have the effect. Now it's going to look a little intense because we're at 100%, but we're going to go back and dial that down a little bit. And since this is a mask, we can fix some of the areas where we don't want the effect, like in her hair. Okay, I feel pretty good about that. So now I'm just going to change the fill and the opacity, lowering that down. 
gonna do a little toggle before and after to see if I like the effect. And honestly, I feel pretty good about that. I like how it neutralized the face. It looks really good on the body. So the only thing I want to do is bring back some of the pinkness in the cheeks. So I'm going to do this by using a black brush, lowering the opacity and flow because I don't want it to be super strong. I want to just lightly brush it in. We'll toggle that before and after. I'm going to do a little bit more. Great, I feel good about that. So now that I feel like my image is complete with my skin retouching, what I would do next is use one of my editorial skin tone actions. And for this one, I think Tone Simple will work quite well. And this is what it looks like with the action. And this is a toggle of the frequency separation layer, but with the action on top. This kind of helps demonstrate a little bit more aggressively where some of those changes were made. And that concludes the frequency separation and portraiture tutorial. I hope that this was helpful and that you learned some tips and tricks along the way. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments below. Until next time. <laughs>